by the hour, which may have been her own. You will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, I'm sure. giving all praise and glory to our Lord and Savior, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shai, as we gather for another Winds of Wisdom, readings of the ancients, and writings from the inspired words of the prophets of old, which have been handed down to the children of Israel, today known as your so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Tonight we will be reading out of the book of the Apocrypha. The Book of Sirach, also known as Ecclesiasticus. So let's begin. Book of Sirach, chapter 35. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. He that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. He that requiteth a good turn offereth fine flour. And he that giveth alms sacrificeth to depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to Yahweh. And to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation. Thou shalt not appear empty before Yahweh. For all these things are to be done. Because of the commandment, the offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat, and the sweet savor thereof is before Yahweh. The sacrifice of a judge just man is acceptable, and the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. Give Yahweh his honor with a good eye, and diminish not 
the first fruits of thine hands. In all thy gifts, show a cheerful countenance and dedicate thy tithes with gladness. Give unto the Most High according as he hath enriched thee. And as thou hast gotten, give with a cheerful eye. For Yahweh recompenseth and will give thee seven times as much. Do not think to corrupt with gifts, for such he will not receive. And trust not to unrighteous sacrifices, for Yahweh is judge, and with him is no respect of persons. He will not accept any person against a poor man, but will hear the prayer of the oppressed. He will not despise the supplication of the fatherless, nor the widow when she poureth out her complaint. Do not the tears run down the widow's cheeks and is not her cry against him that causes them to fail. He that serveth the Lord shall be accepted with favor, and his prayer shall reach unto the clouds. The prayer of the humble pierceth the clouds, until it come nigh, he will not be comforted and will not depart till the Most High shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. For Yahweh will not be slack, neither will the mighty be patient towards them till he hath smitten in sunder the loins of the unmerciful and repaid vengeance to the heathen till he have taken away the multitude of the proud and broken the scepter of the unrighteous till he have rendered to every man according to his deeds and to the works of men according to their devices, till he have judged the cause of his people and made them to rejoice in his mercy. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction as clouds of rain in the time of drought. The book of Sirach, chapter 36. Have mercy upon us, O Yahweh, of all, and behold us, and send thy fear upon all, upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Lift up thine hand, against the strange nations and let them see thy power as thou was sanctified in us before them so be thou magnified against them before us and let them know thee as we have known thee that there is no god but only thou O Yahweh, show new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that they may set forth thy wondrous works. 
raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Make the time short. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire, and let them perish that oppress the people. Smite and sunder the hands of the rulers of the heathen that say, there is none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. O Yahweh, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name and upon Israel, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. O oh, be merciful unto Jerusalem, thy holy city, the place of thy rest. Fill Zion with thine unspeakable oracles and thy people with thy glory. Give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. Reward them that wait for thee, and let thy prophets be found faithful. O Yahweh, hear the prayer of thy servants, according to the blessing of Aaron over thy people that all they which dwell upon the earth may know that thou art the Lord, the eternal power. The belly devoureth all meats, yet is one meat better than another. As the palate tastes diverse kinds of venison, so doth an heart of understanding false speeches. A forward heart causes heaviness, but a man of experience will recompense him. A woman will receive every man, yet is one daughter better than another. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance, and a man loveth nothing better. If there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue, then is not her husband like other men. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. And he that hath no wife will wander up and down mourning. Who will trust the thief well appointed? that skippeth from city to city. So who will believe a man that hath no house and longeth wheresoever the night taketh him? Book of Sirach, chapter 37. Every friend saith, I am his friend also. But there is a friend which is 
only a friend in name. Is it not a grief unto death when a companion and friend is turned to an enemy? O oh, wicked imagination, whence camest thou in to cover the earth with deceit? There is a companion which rejoiceth in the prosperity of a friend. But in the time of trouble will be against him. There is a companion which helpeth his friend for the belly and taketh up the buckler against the enemy. Forget not thy friend in thy mind and be not unmindful of him in thy riches. Every counselor extolleth counsel, but there is some that counseleth for himself. Beware of a counselor, and know before what need he hath, for he will counsel for himself, lest he cast the lot upon thee and say unto thee, thy way is good. And afterward, he stand on the other side to see what shall befall thee. Consult not with one that suspecteth thee <clears throat> and hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous, neither with a coward in matters of war, nor with a merchant concerning exchange, nor with a buyer of selling, nor with an envious man of thankfulness, nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness, nor with the slothful for any work, nor with an hireling for a year of finishing work, nor with an idle servant of much business, hearken not unto these in any matter of counsel, but be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord whose mind is according to thy mind and will not sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. And let the counsel of thine own heart stand, for there is no man more faithful unto thee than it. For a man's mind is sometime wont to tell him more than seven watchmen that sit above in a high tower. And above all this, pray to the Most High that he will direct thy way in truth. Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. The countenance is a sign of changing of the heart. Four matter of things appear, good and evil, life and death. But the tongue ruleth over them continually. 
There is one that is wise and teacheth many, and yet is unprofitable to himself. There is one that showeth wisdom in words and is hated. He shall be destitute of all food. For grace is not given him from Yahweh, because he is deprived of all wisdom. Another is wise to himself, and the fruits of understanding are commendable in his mouth. A wise man instructeth his people, and the fruits of his understanding fail not. A wise man shall be filled with blessing, and all they that see him shall count him happy. The days of the life of man may be numbered, but the days of Israel are innumerable. A wise man shall inherit glory among his people, and his name shall be perpetual. My son, prove thy soul in thy life, and see what is evil for it, and give not that unto it. For all things are not profitable for all men. Neither hath every soul pleasure in everything. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing, nor too greedy upon meats. For excess of meats bringeth sickness and surfeiting will turn into choler. By surfeiting have many perished, but he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. Book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38. Honor a physician with the honor due unto him for the uses which he may have of him. For Yahweh hath created him. For of the Most High cometh healing, and he shall receive honor of the king. The skill of the physician shall lift up his head. And in the sight of great men, he shall be in admiration. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth. And he that is wise will not abhor them. Was not the water made sweet with wood? That the virtue thereof might be known? And he hath given men skill, that he might be honored in his marvelous works. With such doth he heal men, and taketh away their pains. Of such doth the apothecary make a confection, and of his works there's no end. And from him is peace over all the earth. My son, in thy sickness be not negligent, but pray unto Yahweh, and he will make thee whole. Leave off from sin and order thine hands aright, and cleanse thine heart from all wickedness. 
give a sweet savour and a memorial of fine flour and make a fat offering as not being. Then give place to the physician for the Lord hath created him. Let him not go from thee, for thou hast need of him. There is a time when in their hands there is good success, for they shall also pray unto Yahweh, that he would prosper that which they give for ease and remedy to prolong life. He that sinneth before his maker, let him fall into the hand of the physician. My son, let tears fall down over the dead and begin to lament. And if thou hast suffered great harm thyself, and then cover his body according to the custom and neglect not his burial. Weep bitterly and make great moan and use lamentation as he is worthy and that a day or two, lest thou be evil spoken of and then comfort thyself for thy heaviness. For of heaviness cometh death, and the heaviness of the heart breaketh strength. In affliction also sorrow remaineth, and the life of the poor is the curse of the heart. Take no heaviness to heart, drive it away, and remember the last end. Forget it not, for there is no turning again. Thou shalt not do him good, but hurt thyself. Remember my judgment, for thine also shall be so yesterday for me and today for thee. When the dead is at rest, let his remembrance rest and be comforted for him when his spirit is departed from him. The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure and he that hath little business shall become wise. How can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow and that glorieth in the gold that driveth oxen and is occupied in their labors and whose talk is of bullocks? He giveth his mind to make furrows and is diligent to give the kind fodder. So every carpenter and workmaster that worketh night and day and they that cut and grave seals and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves to counterfeit imagery and watch to finish a work. The smith also sitting by the anvil and considering the ironwork, the vapor of the fire wasteth his flesh and he fighteth with the heat of the furnace the noise of the hammer and the anvil is ever in his ears 
and his eyes look still upon the pattern of the thing that he maketh. He setteth his mind to finish his work and watches to perish it, per polish it perfectly. So doth the potter sitting at his work and turning the wheel about with his feet, who is always carefully set at his work and maketh all his work by number. He fashioneth the clay with his arm and boweth down his strength before his feet. He applieth himself to lead it over and he is diligent to make clean the furnace. All these trust to their hands, and every one is wise in his work. Without these cannot a city be inhabited, and they shall not dwell where they will, nor go up and down. They shall not be sought for in public counsel, nor sit high in the congregation. For they shall not sit on the judge's seat, nor understand the sentence of judgment. They cannot declare justice and judgment and they shall not be found where parables are spoken. But they will maintain the state of the world and all their desire is in the work of their craft. Book of Sirach, chapter 39. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men and where subtle parables are, he will be there also. He will seek out secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables. He shall serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange countries for he hath tried the good and the evil among them. He will give his heart to resort early to the Lord that made him and will pray before the Most High and will open his mouth in prayer and make supplication for his sins. <laughs> when the great Lord will, he shall be filled with the spirit of understanding he shall pour out wise sentences and give thanks unto the Lord in his prayer. He shall direct his counsel and knowledge and in his secrets shall he meditate. He shall show forth that which he hath learned and shall glory in the law of the covenant of Yahweh. Many shall commend his understanding, and so long as the world endureth, he shall not be blotted out. His memorial shall not depart away, and his name shall live from generation to generation. 
Nations shall show forth his wisdom and the congregation shall declare his praise. If he die, he shall leave a greater name than a thousand. And if he live, he shall increase it. Yet have I more to say, which I have thought upon, for I am filled as the moon at the full. Hearkeneth unto me, ye holy children, and bud forth as a rose growing by the brook of the field. And give ye a sweet savor as frankincense and flourish as a lily. Send forth a smell and sing a song of praise. Bless Yahweh in all his works. Magnify his name and show forth his praise with the songs of your lips and with harps. And in praising him, ye shall say after this manner, all the works of Yahweh are exceeding good and whatsoever he commandeth shall be accomplished in due season. And none may say, what is this? Wherefore is that? For at, <clears throat> for at time convenient, they shall all be sought out. At his commandment, the water stood as an heap. And at the words of his mouth, the receptacles of waters. At his commandment is done whatsoever pleaseth him. And none can hinder when he will save. The works of all flesh are before him and nothing can be hid from his eyes. He seeth from everlasting to everlasting, and there's nothing wonderful before him. A man need not to say, what is this? Wherefore is that? For he hath made all things for their uses. His blessing covered the dry land as a river and watered it as a flood. As he hath turned the waters into saltness, so shall the heathen inherit his wrath. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. For the good are good things created from the beginning. So evil things for sinners. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil, and clothing. All these things are for good to the godly. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. There be spirits that are created for vengeance which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death 
All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment, and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. Therefore, from the beginning, I was resolved and thought upon these things and have left them in writing. All the works of Yahweh are good, and he will give every needful thing in due season. So, that a man cannot say, this is worse than that, for in time they shall all be well approved. And therefore, praise ye Yahweh with the whole heart and mouth, and bless the name of Yahweh. And that Yasha Allah shall conclude this Wednesday's words of wisdom. I pray all was uplifting and satisfying. Shalom Yasha Allah. Shalom Akim Wa Akwaf. Shalom.